Hey everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel, Relax Cut Glue. If you're new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you all here with me today. So I had several questions, emails, messages, comments, etc. asking me if I could show you how I made my uh, paper bag glue book, this really big one. You could use this as a scrapbook, an art journal, a junk journal. Um, you can just, you know, glue whatever you wanted in it, add stickers to it. Just, you can use this for whatever you want. Um, mine is relatively big. It's about 12 by 12, but you can make them any size. And I do have smaller, um, pages in here as well. So the paper bags that I'm using today are from a different store. So these bags are slightly smaller. So I will be taking them apart a little bit differently. So I used three grocery store bags. These are from Fred Meyers. And like I said, these bags are just slightly smaller. With my other glue book, the one I just showed you, I just cut this whole bottom part off and I had all of this to work with. And it was a bigger bag, but this one's slightly smaller. So I'm going to go about it differently as I've just said. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a little bit off around the edges here around the bottom and I used three bags for my glue book because I wasn't sure if that would be enough or if I wanted more. So I'm just cutting just a smidge. It doesn't matter if it's straight or not right now because we're gonna be, we'll fix all that later. Right now I'm just trying to keep as much of the bag as I can because I need to use all of this down here as well. Okay, so now I'm kind of opening it up a little bit and just kind of cutting off this edge. So basically I'm just cutting a little bit off all the way around the bottom, making sure that I open this up because I don't want to cut this. So just kind of open this up. And like I said, I'm just barely cutting the tips off just so I can get this completely opened up. Okay, so now I take this part off. You could save this for whatever you want. And so now you have an opened up bag because now you can open it up all the way. So let's find the crease. Here's where mine is. This is where they glue the bag together. And on my other bags, I just gently peeled it apart. Take your time so you don't rip your bag. If you do rip it, that's okay. You can, I mean, you don't have to use all of this. And then once I got about halfway, I switched to the other side because I noticed it starts to get like a little I don't know. I just, I feel like it starts to rip a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Now on mine, I cut this piece off because it just has this glue right here and stuff. I cut that edge off. You don't have to if it doesn't bother you, um, but that's just what I did. And you'll repeat this process for the other two bags as well. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. Okay, so now you have this big piece, right? And this is where you can fold it and make it any size you want. If you don't like the wrinkles in this, you can always iron it. Put a towel on top of it, iron it out. It doesn't bother me because I feel like once I start gluing on it, it flattens out. Um, so again, you will trim off the edge if you don't like the edge. So I want to fold this and make it, I don't know, about 12 inches, right? Because that's what I did my other one at. So I grab a cutting mat that is 12 inches. And so let's see, here's where the first fold is. Just kind of lining that fold up along the edge. And it looks like this fold makes it exactly 12 inches. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold it right here. This is how it was with my last bag too. It seems like when you fold it over, it, it just is about 12 inches because that includes the sides and the front. Okay, so there is that. Now, if you just want it to be 12 inches, you would now cut this piece off. And this extra piece that I would then cut off is what I folded in half and made a page in my other book. Granted, my other book was a lot bigger than this one, um, or my my sheet of paper that I had to work with because my bag was bigger. 
So what you can do is see how this naturally folds like this? You could keep it like that. Not, this is what I did with mine. And I folded it like this. So now when you open it, oh wait, wrong way, sorry. <laughs> So you could have it to where it folds. So you'd have it like this. You probably need to create a new fold, obviously. Well, I would cut this off, but you could always fold this. Let me show you here. So here's where my 12 inch fold is. This is the front of my book. So then I could take this piece here and fold it and right at that crease mark, right where this is. So now I've folded it. So now I would need to fold it again. And that way you would have, so here's your book, you open it, and then you could have this and then this. I don't want to do that. Okay, so once you've realized you have the length of, or the width of your book that you want, you can just cut this piece off. So that's what I'm choosing to do here. I will just cut this off. I'm just using some scissors because I can trim all this up and make it perfect once I either A, get the book together or B, once I realize, I, you know, cut this apart and then I can trim it up and make it all perfect. Okay, so now I have this piece and like I said, this book is a, or this bag was a little bit smaller. So when I used my larger um paper bag. I used this piece to fold in half and I glued this in my glue book as well. I didn't waste this. But this one seems like it's wider if I go this way with it and I could just have a shorter piece in my book, which is what I think I would do. Um, trying to decide if I want to cut this off right here because it is a little bumpy from the glue and I probably would. Um, but you don't have to use these pieces if you don't want to. Basically, you just want this big 12 by 12 piece here. So I'm going to trim this up now. So right here, I have my big guillotine trimmer. And I just want to trim a little bit and make this, um, I wanna cut off this ripply edge. And I do have a little couple slight tears in it. So let me make sure that this is flat. Okay. Ooh, it is a little bit too big. Okay. I'm gonna actually fold this in half a little bit, just loosely because I need to cut some of this off. There we go. And it was just too long to do it all the way across. So I just folded it in half lightly. Okay, so now we have the top. Let's do the bottom. Okay, I need to do the same thing. I'm just kind of lightly going to fold this, making sure it's even on this end so I could cut off this uneven end. Okay, so now the top is straight and the bottom is straight. Let's get these sides. I'm gonna have to fold it again. I'm just lightly folding it in half so I can cut some of this off and make it smaller so it can fit in my trimmer. There we go. Okay, so let's cut this to 12 now. Okay, so I'm just making sure all my sides are 12 by 12. Obviously, if you want this to be bigger, you can make it bigger. Okay, so here's my 12 by 12 sheet now. Technically, it's 12 by 24. 
and I would repeat. And then if you want to use these sheets for filler, like I did, where you can fold it in half and have a shorter piece on the inside, you could do that. That way you're not wasting this. Or you could use this to make an entirely new glue book out of and just make a smaller one. Okay, so now I have my three pieces that are 12 by 12. And then I used three pieces that were left over from my bag, folded them in half, and they are not all the same height. They are actually a half an inch or a quarter of an inch shorter than the one previous, just because I had to cut off some ripped parts or whatever. So it doesn't matter what size they are. Now you can totally add more bags if you want. One thing I did do once I was finished getting everything cut is I just kind of took my bone folder went over everything, recreased it, kind of flattened some wrinkles down. Again, you can iron these if you want to. I'm not going to. My glue book right now was wrinkly and it is pretty flat right now. So once you start gluing on them, they really start to lay flat. Um, but you know, do what you want. So now you have three pages big and three pages little. So I'm obviously going to start with a bigger one first. Now, if you wanted the flippy part that I did in my first one, you would have needed to um, save instead of cutting this off, you would have kept it and folded it over like I showed you previously. Um, I don't think I would do that again. It's kind of just makes the book too big. Um, if you want to add them later, you could always take these pieces now that you have them cut and you would simply just tape it to here and then it would flip and you could flip it over like that if you wanted to do it that way. So I'm going to start with my big piece and then I will go in with a smaller piece and then a big piece. And you can do these in any order that you want. I'm going to actually keep these closed. It makes it easier. Okay, and then a little piece and a big piece, and then a little piece. Have them all in there. Just gonna kinda go like that, smush it down. This book, this, <laughs> this book's not going as easy as my first one did. Go figure, cause now I'm doing a tutorial. Now, if the pages hanging over bother you, you can always trim them down once you've sewn your book together. I find it's easier to do that after. All right, and now we just need to sew them together. So here's the thing. If you do not want to sew yours together, you can do one of two things. You could just staple down the side here, like ch -ch 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 -ch. do it that way. Um, you could glue, well, I don't know if I'd glue this together. I mean, you could glue down the edges here of each page, but I would think staples would actually work better than the gluing part, but you can do it however you want to do it. So on my first one, I did a five hole pamphlet stitch. I don't think that's totally necessary. I'm just gonna do a three hole pamphlet stitch. It's very simple, very easy. So I'm going to get four clips. You could use paper clips for this if you wanted. And I'm going to open up the book to the middle. I'm putting my finger in there. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Let me open this up so you can see what I'm doing here. So see how my fingers are in here? I'm gonna close this back up. Make sure you move your middle papers to where you want them to be. So I want that more in the middle. I'm gonna make this one go more in the middle as well. Doesn't really matter unless it matters to you. Okay, so I'm gonna pull those towards me. Give it a tap. Sorry I'm shaking the camera. Tap, 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 tap while pressing because what you want is you want all of the, the pieces to be pushed against each other into the spine. If they're loosey-goosey, it's gonna be loosey-goosey when you uh, sew it together and it's not gonna stick. So you really want, and like I said, this is what's hard about it being a bigger book. So put your fingers in there, like so, close it, press down and just tap on the table. Make sure that all the edges are poking into each other there. And while I'm still squeezing and holding on, I'm gonna take my clamps and clamp the pages together. I'm still holding it on this side, so I know they're still all together. You can tap it one more time if you feel necessary. 
Okay. And we are going to clamp it. Okay, now let's clamp the other side. And do the same thing. Get my finger in there, making sure I want these pushed all the way together. Okay, yes, holding on to it, clamping. Okay, so now we have it all clamped together. So with the three hole pamphlet stitch, you're gonna need like an awl or something that you can poke through the paper with. Now, typically when we're gluing it, or I'm sorry, sewing in a book, we're able to hold it up this way and poke our holes in, but this is so big, we're not able to do that. So what I do in this part, I'm really not gonna be able to show you because I have to do it at this angle, is I keep it flat like this and then I kind of open it enough to where I can see and I just poke my awl in so it goes right into the middle here. So I basically just bring it like this and go and poke a hole. So you're gonna want three holes. I don't measure for a three hole pamphlet stitch, but you absolutely can. You want one somewhere in the middle. And then I usually go about an uh, inch and a half from the top and an inch and a half from the bottom and I just eyeball it. If you want them to be perfect, feel free to use a ruler and mark three holes um, on the inside because that's where you'll know where to poke. So I'm just going to, see I'm just putting my awl right in here and I'm just gonna poke it straight through as you can see there. So there's my middle. There's the one side and the reason why I'm going in like you could go closer to the edge, but I have shorter pieces in there. So I wanna make sure that my stitching is going to be catching those shorter pieces as well. Okay, put it in there, push through. Okay, so now we ha have our three holes there and I'm going to take some embroidery floss and I'm going to take this the width of my bag or the height of my bag so it is and I'm going to do this three times. So there's one, two, three. That's a general rule of how much um, string you will need is three times the length or height of your book. So I just chopped that off. Garbage day. Use the noise. I'm going to grab a needle. And I'm going to thread this. Now, if you want your tie, when you tie it off in the end, if you want your tie on the outside, you're gonna start on the outside. If you wanna tie it on the inside, you're gonna start on the inside. I normally do, but I'm learning that I'd rather have the flush side on the inside and my tie on the outside so I don't have that bump I have to glue over, if that makes sense. So, I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to, if you keep your book folded, it makes it easier for the needle to go in because that's how the hole was made. So I'm going in the middle and it doesn't matter if you go up or down at this point. I'm gonna go down. You're gonna leave a tail. You can adjust it later if you end up pulling too much. Now you're gonna go in this hole. There we go. Pulling it a little tight. Not too tight, because this is paper. You don't wanna rip it. And then I go all the way to that top hole. Go in. Pull it tight. And then you're gonna go through this hole again, but you want to be very careful when you go through this hole that you don't go through this yarn or this string. So what I tend to do is I take the outside string and just kind of pull it this way. So that kind of makes the, the string go that direction a little bit. And then you're gonna put it right back through. Okay, and then you pull it through. And make sure you get that little tail out of there. Okay, so then what you want to do is you have your strings here. You wanna make sure your two strings are on either side of this, okay? On either side of this. Right now, they're both to the left. What is going on here? <laughs> Always when I'm on camera, man, always. 
Okay, so I want to take one of them and put it under so it's on the other side. Sometimes they come out like that. Okay, so now you just want to kind of pull tight, not too tight because you don't want to rip your holes. Make sure everything is tight. Open it up. Look inside. Make sure these are tight. Again, not too tight because you don't want to rip your pages. So, you know. So now that I have one string on this side of this and one string on this side, I'm just going to tie a knot. And I tie two, sometimes three. And then if you want, you can hang dangles off of this. You can tie a bow. You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to cut that shorter for now because I don't really care about all that kind of stuff. And then you can take your clips off. Okay. I think I'll make this side my front. Okay, so now you have your glue book. So you open it up and then you have your shorter piece. Then you have your bigger piece, shorter piece, bigger piece, shorter piece. Here's your middle. Again, 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 and again. So there is your paper bag glue book. And if you find that it's a little wonky when you're done, you can always um, flatten it out and then trim it with a ruler and um, an X-Acto knife if you want it to be more perfect than it appears to be. But otherwise, there you go. And it is so fun to glue in this, let me tell you. It is an absolute blast. And you don't have to make it 12 inches. You can make it smaller if you wanted. So that is how I made my paper bag glue book. You can see now how flat this one is getting. Um, see, I have the shorter pages in here like that. Now this is the flippy part out that I was telling you about that I wouldn't do again. It just makes the book so long. Um, it's really not worth it to me. So I kept this in just to see if I would like it. I wouldn't do that again. Um, but if you want to do that, then on one of your pieces, leave it um, the full length and just fold in the piece that's left over. Um, but again, I wouldn't do that again. I like it the way I did this one better. So here's where I'm at with this book so far. I'm just putting random images. I did this the other day off camera and I did this page off camera the other day. So I'm just having fun using magazine images, just random. You don't have to do yours random. You can do a theme. Random is a theme for me, so I just put random things down that I think either are interesting, colorful, funny, that sort of thing. That's how I do my glue books, but you could do like a dog theme. You could do vintage. I think with this one, I'm going to fill it with my vintage magazines, like literal vintage magazines, um, and do that with this one. Um, but I'm just absolutely loving this. And this was a little post-it that I had sitting on my desk that I used the other day. So I glued that down. This is part of a calendar. Uh, this was from a textbook my son had. He's in high school and they didn't need it anymore. And they were going to recycle them. So he brought me one home. And I cut out all the images I could find in there. Um, what else have I used? Yeah, just tons of different... Uh, magazine images. This is again from a textbook. Yeah, I have all kinds of stuff. Look, I use, you can cut these out. These are always in the back of People Magazine. I needed it to be smaller, so then I put that piece right here. Um, yeah, I just, this was from a magazine, or I'm sorry, a calendar. So just have fun with it and cut things out. I mean, the more you look at this, the more you find. Like, I put a burger and a hot dog here. I have colored lambs. Flowers. This is from a free catalog. This is from a free catalog. Like a lot of this stuff is like from catalogs and things of that nature. So yeah, super fun, super easy. And all the hardest part really is just cutting down these enormous books or these enormous bags. So if you have a bigger cutting mat, that would be easy to do. You don't have to use a paper trimmer like I did. You can use a ruler and, um, an X-Acto knife, and if you're having a problem with it being too big for your paper trimmer, you can do like I did, and I kind of folded a page over in half and kind of cut some of the length off so I could fit it in my paper trimmer. 
But there you go. That's how I did it. I hope this answers all of your questions. It's pretty easy. Cut the bottom off, rip the sides open. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. You got yourself a glue book that you got for free or maybe 30 cents because here we have to pay 10 cents per bag. <laughs> All right, everyone, and that is going to conclude today's video. Thank you so much for asking for this tutorial. I wasn't sure if anybody would want it, so I was happy to oblige. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Don't forget to drink your water. If you wouldn't mind, hit that like button. It's a great way to support me and my channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fabulous day, my friends. Bye.